So far in this video series, we've learned what logarithms are, how to use them, how to simplify them, and how to solve them. What we have not focused on yet is how to graph them. So when graphing logarithmic functions, it's important to understand what the parent function looks like. Now we see two different graphs here. One of these graphs is represented when b is greater than 1, when your base is greater than 1. And what you see when your base is greater than 1 is that your graph is increasing from left to right. When your base is between 0 and 1, it's decreasing from left to right. Now that concept of being greater than 1 increasing and between 0 and 1 decreasing. Greater than 1, you see growth. Between 0 and 1, you see it in a way, maybe you can say decaying for it. And that should be a concept that should be familiar to us. And we'll see why in the first example we're going to do. But understand your domain is all positive real numbers. Positive because of your base having to be positive for the restriction. That means your value has to be positive as well. So your domain is all positive real numbers. Your range is all real numbers. We do still have an asymptote. You see it is the y-axis. It comes down and approaches it, but never touch it. It comes up in the left, approaches it, and never touches it. So be familiar with this setup. Before we move on to this example, let's look at y equals 2 to the x and y equals log base 2 of x. I want to graph both of these on the same grid. I'm going to compare them with each other. So let's first start with this one. I'm going to use blue. When graphing this, let's create a table of values. X column, Y column. Create your own X values. Now, I'm going to use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. I'm just randomly picking them. I know what the graph should look like. I know these will fit on the grid. That's how I'm choosing them. You can rely on your calculator to choose them if you're using that. This means 2 to the negative second, which means 1 over 2 squared. So that's 1 fourth. This means 2 to the negative first, which means 1 over 2 to the first, which is 1 half. This means 2 to the 0. Anything to the 0 is 1. 2 to the first is 2. And 2 squared is 4. And so I'm going to plot these. At negative 2, I'm at 1 fourth. At negative 1, I'm at 1 half. At 0, I'm at 1. At 1, I'm at 2. At 2, I'm at 4. And then I'm going to connect these with a curve. So I'm going to start from the y-intercept and curve up for it. And then I'm going to curve down for it. Now let's graph the other one. Let's graph y equals log base 2 of x. Now this one's trickier to graph. This one, for you guys, you're not going to enjoy as much. For me, I find it fun. You need to remember logarithmic to exponential conversion. If you take a look at this, log p equals log base b of n. And so if I take a look at this, look at this. p and y are the same. p is your power. And so now what happens is instead of choosing x's like I did here, I get to choose y's because y is the power. And so I'm going to choose my powers. So let's do the same ones we did before. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And so really what this means is to find the x, negative 2 equals log base 2 of x. It means 2 to the negative second power equals x. Well, 2 to the negative second power is 1 fourth. You know, if y is negative 1, negative 1 equals log base 2 of x, that means 2 to the negative first power equals x. Well, that's 1 half. Look at this. 1 fourth, 1 half. Negative 2 to positive 2, negative 2 to positive 2. Something tells me that this value is going to be 1, this value is going to be 2, this value is going to be 4. And so let's graph it. At 1, I'm at 0. At 1 half, I'm at negative 1. At 1 fourth, I'm at negative 2. 
at two, I'm at one. At four, I'm at two. And now grab this curve. It's going to go up to the right of the curve, and it's going to come, and it's going to approach that y axis for the asymptote. How do these two graphs relate to each other? This is this is the cool thing for it. How do these two graphs relate to each other? What is the similarity between them? And this is why I did the table of values with us. Is look at your tables. Here, the axes are from negative 2 to 2. Here, that's your y values. And so if I let me mark this. This column is the same as this column. Your x for one is the same as your y for the other. Your y for one is the same as the x for the other. So what does that mean? That means your x values and your y values traded places, didn't they? They switched with each other. What does that mean when your x values and your y values switch? Well, that is what we called inverses. Your inverses are when your x values and your y values switch places. And so how do these graphs relate to each other? What do we notice about them? They are inverses of each other. Because remember, inverses will reflect over the equation y equals x. And they are perfect reflections over that line. So what does that tell us? That tells us exponential form and logarithmic form are inverses of each other.